Modern humans have walked the Earth for about 300,000 years, and especially in the past 6,000 years, we have left our mark. Now, a group of scientists claims to have identified the place which best illustrates the destabilizing effect humans have had on our planet. And they say research at the site allows them to pinpoint the 1950s as the time when a new geological time period began the Anthropocene. The Anthropocene Working Group investigated layers of sediment at the bottom of Crawford Lake in Canada. They say those sediments show evidence of a sudden and irreversible shift in conditions on Earth. Evidence of human involvement include the presence of fly ash from the combustion of fossil fuels, acid rain, and radioactive fallout from nuclear bomb tests. And we can now speak to Francine McCarthy. She's a micropaleontologist and member of the Anthropocene Working Group. Ms. McCarthy, welcome to DW. Now, tell us, what did you find in Crawford Lake that allowed you to pinpoint the beginning of the Anthropocene? Well, we found in Crawford Lake what we actually found in the other 11 sites that the Anthropocene Working Group was studying to see if there is evidence of a massive shift in the Earth system in the mid 20th century. So Crawford Lake is just the best example of those changes, but all the 12 sites that we studied around the world from the Antarctic ice sheet to a peat bog in Snietzka in Poland to Crawford Lake, all of these different sites record massive changes in atmospheric composition, uh, increase in pollutants associated primarily with the burning of fossil fuels, very, very high quantities of fossil fuels, the rapid increase in industrial output during and after the Second World War, and the increase in global population of humans. So all of these things, as you say, as you said in your introduction, there have been modern humans for 300,000 years, agriculture, you know, for, you know, more than 6,000 years, et cetera. But what happened in all of that time is that humans impact their local environment. But by that middle 20th century, by around 1950, the entire planet, the planetary system shifted. It, it reached a tipping point and it completely changed in its its essence so that we suggest that it should no longer be referred to as the Holocene, the period we're living in, the the, ep the epoch we're living in. It should be called the Anthropocene. And this is what why Paul is there Kirsten, why is there a Dutch need to define a new epoch? Pardon me? Why is there a need to define a new chapter in our history? So the need is because if we don't recognize that the earth behaves differently than it used to for 11,700 years of the Holocene, it behaved one way. So we can make decisions about what to do in the future if we understand the entity that we're dealing with. If the earth no longer behaves that way, if since the mid 20th century, the rules have changed, then making decisions on the basis of that longer interval of Earth history is not valid. It's not the best way to make a decision. So I've used the analogy a few times of when you, when you raise a child and that child reaches uh, their teenage years, adolescence, they're different. They're the same person, but they behave differently. You can't treat them the same way that you used to. You can't expect the same kind of feedback that you used to get. So if you don't realize that it's different, that, that they're teenagers and not children, then you're not dealing with them appropriately. And, and so to give the earth the age of the, you know, the Anthropocene epoch, as mm -hmm. opposed to referring it, or just thinking it's business as usual, it's a way to actually accept reality and deal with things effectively. Yeah. The irreversible change humanity has caused to the planet, and we're talking about acid rain here, about pollution, about atomic bombs, is it all bad? Uh, 
is it all bad? It's, it's, it's different than it used to be. That's the key thing. Um, it's, uh, on balance, not good because those humans that you refer to having, you know, evolved, you know, 300,000 years lived in a, in a world that is, you know, one way now having to exist in a world that is different, that poses challenges. So having more pollutants in the air, it causes more respiratory ailments. Uh, you know, having more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere leads to climate extremes that are very difficult to cope with. They result in droughts, in floods. Uh, they cause physiological stress on humans. Uh, we can't exist. I think it's 46 degrees Celsius beyond which our, you know, our bodies can no longer tolerate. So, so yeah, for humans, uh, I think it is important to recognize that, that the, the, the accumulation, the accumulation of all of those small factors have led to a planet that long term, if we keep not addressing the issue by not facing up to the fact that it's a different world, then for humans, it may not be a comfortable planet. For other animals, plants, other entities, will, most of them will probably be fine, obviously not polar bears, but there are many things that might prefer a warmer you know, world mm -hmm. than the one we have now, but humans won't. That is a grim outlook for humanity that we got from micropaleontologist Francine McCarthy. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, bye.